Today's Daily Read Aloud is The Insane Inventor from the Ben 10 TV series. One night in Washington, D.C., two thieves sped down a road fleeing from a jewellery store that they had just robbed. Safe in their car, they thought they had committed the perfect crime. But as they made their way through the city streets, the thieves soon found themselves being chased by a camper van. The van's headlights glared through their rear windscreen, making it impossible to see who was driving. Without warning, the thieves were hit by an almighty blast, a fireball. No sooner had they been hit than their vehicle flipped and crashed into a wall. Within moments, the two thieves were face to face with heat blast. Unless you punks want a permanent sunburn, hands against the wall. The thieves tremored in the fiery alien's presence and stood against the wall, awaiting their arrest. Heat blast proceeded to taunt the criminals. You punks picked the wrong day to be bad. But just as he was about to claim victory, the Omnitrix sounded and the heat blast transformed back into 10-year-old Ben Tennyson. Guys! Luckily, a team of police soon arrived. This time, Ben had been saved. They're all yours, officers, he said. Now, I know you all want to thank me, but step aside, son, one of the officers ordered. This isn't playtime. Oh, it's not fair, Ben protested. I'm the hero, but his words went unheard. The next day, a man was visiting a run-down apartment. He let himself into the property and slowly wandered through it. The place looked like some kind of animal laboratory. Without warning, an angry man crept up. His name, Dr. Animo. How did you get in? Barsky, the man replied. I am still your landlord, remember? Maybe not, since your rent is six months past due. All my funds go into my research, Dr. Animo declared. Now get out. Listen, Doc, the landlord threatened. You and your furry friends are out on the street unless you pony up the green. Interesting choice of phrases, Animo replied. You must be an animal lover. Then you're going to love this. Dr. Animo grabbed a toad from an enclosure and placed it on the floor. He then fixed a strange device to the top of his head. This is my transmodulator, phase number one. It creates and accelerates mutations at the genetic level. The scientist switched on his device and an electrical charge shot from the top of his helmet to the toad. The animal started to grow. Within moments, the creature had transformed into a giant beast. Suddenly, Animo's overdue rent was the least of the landlord's concerns. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Ben, Max and Gwen were visiting a mega mart in search of camping supplies. Max walked straight to a shelf that was stacked with tin cans. Only canned octopus! I thought this store prided itself on its wide selection. Ah, Grandpa, Gwen interrupted. No offence, but can we have a normal dinner for once? You know, one that doesn't involve stir-fried tentacles? Nonsense, Max replied. Now, where do you suppose they keep those sheep's bladders? As his cousin and grandfather wandered off, Ben spied a display of sumo slammer cards. His eyes went directly for the prized golden card. Some day, he said longingly, you'll all be mine. All of a sudden, the ground started to shake. Within moments, the air was filled with dust as a wall caved in. Ben ducked for cover, then peered around the edge of an aisle and saw something that left him lost for words. Dr. Animo entered the Megamart on the back of a giant toad, jumped off his back and went about stealing some materials for his inventions. Ben had to say something about this. 
What do you think you're doing? Don't be a hero, kid, Animo answered. Just run along and play. Ben wanted to make the evil villain eat his own words, but when he went to use the Omnitrix, it had no power. He couldn't go hero. Animo simply smirked at Ben, then escaped on the toad. Before he left the Megamart, however, he had one stop to make. Gwen and Max were in the pet aisle when they heard the thunderous toad approach. They stared gobsmacked at Animo as he activated the transmodulator and mutated a hamster and a bird. Now, there were three giant beasts to contend with. Behold the genius of Dr. Animo, the crazed scientist declared. Nothing can stop me from getting what I deserve. Mark my words. As the giant hamster proceeded to race through the store, Ben knew he had to do something. But the Omnitrix was still not working. Then Ben realised something. I don't need to go hero to stop an overgrown furball. Ben grabbed a nearby scooter and prepared for an attack. Just as the hamster was about to make mince meat of Gwen and Max, Ben threw a football at its head. The hamster was soon chasing Ben as he sped off around the corner. Ben raced through the aisles, jumped over the shelves and dodged the sharp claws of the hideous beast. It was tough, but saving the day without going hero was kind of fun. As he rode over the top of a set of shelves, Ben caused them to collapse, trapping the hamster beneath them. That's right, Ben gloated as Gwen and Max approached. Not even a giant hamster can mess with Ben Tennyson. But no sooner had Ben declared victory than Dr. Animo reappeared with his giant toad. Young fool, he cursed. You cannot stop me. I will turn Washington, D.C. into Washington, B.C. Animo then leaped from the back of the toad and landed safely on the giant bird. Together, they flew through the glass ceiling and away from the Megamart, the toad close behind them. As quickly as it become a wild zoo the building was peaceful once again you saved the store a grateful shop assistant said to ben if there's anything i can do to repay you anything you want ben's eyes went straight towards the golden sumo slammer card well he began now that you mention it no time for that ben max interrupted dragging ben away we have a giant parrot to follow before he knew it Ben was back in the camper van, speeding after Animo and the giant bird. Max was thrilled to be on the chase, but Ben sulked in the passenger seat. Ben, what's the matter? Max asked. I saved an entire Megamart from being a giant hamster's chew toy, and what do I get? Ben exclaimed. Nothing. It's not fair. Being a hero isn't about others knowing you did something good, Max explained. It's about you knowing you did something good. Being a hero is its own reward. Bingo, Gwen suddenly said, looking up from her laptop. Dr. Animo was a promising researcher in veterinary science, but it turned out he was doing some twisted genetic experiments where he was mutating animals. And when he didn't win some big prize called the Verities Award, he flipped out. But as Gwen talked, Animo managed to evade the group. We've lost him, Max said. He could be going anywhere in Washington, D.C. Oh, Washington, B.C., Gwen added. That's it, Ben exclaimed. I know where he's going. The camper van soon pulled up outside the Natural History Museum. As the Tennysons approached a large hole in the museum's wall, Ben noticed an oversized feather on the ground. Something tells me we're on the right track, Max noted. The threesome wandered through the museum on the lookout for their foe. They soon found him standing in front of a mammoth exhibit. We all know about you and your freakazoid experiments, Dr. Animo, Ben announced. It's over! Dr. Animo spun around. But it's only just begun. See? I only needed a few components to push my work into phase two. 
the reanimation of dormant cells, breathing life back into which has long since been lifeless. And with that, he activated the transmodulator and brought the fossil mammoth back to life. As the mammoth approached the Tennysons, Ben hit the Omnitrix. You guys get Animo, he said to Max and Gwen. I'll take care of Jumbo. Within moments, he had transformed into Forearms. Let's wrestle, Forearms called out as he ran towards the giant beast. Then he grabbed the mammoth's tusks and threw it to the ground. Gwen and Max ran off after Animo. As they reached one of the museum's massive halls, they saw the crazed inventor bringing a Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton to life. Animo jumped on the back of the dinosaur. I'd love to stay, he called out, but I need to claim the award I so richly deserve. Then he bashed through a wall and raced away from the museum. Max and Glenn watched as Animo and the Beast thundered into the distance. Then, without warning, Gwen was lifted off the ground. The giant bird had snatched her. It flew off with Gwen in her talons. Forearms followed close behind, leaping after the mutant bird. But as he grabbed onto the beast's feathers, the Omnitrix started to power down. Forearms plummeted to the ground, creating a massive crater in the road. As he emerged from the ditch, he was Ben once again. Ben watched helplessly as the bird flew away. Gwen! he called out, but it was no use. Screeching brakes then sounded from next to Ben. Somebody call for a taxi! Max called from the camper van. Ben jumped in and the pair sped off. As they trailed the mutant bird, Max showed Ben a newspaper article that Dr. Animo had left at the museum. Dr. Kelly accepts Verity's award, Ben read aloud. He's going to finally pick up his award. We've got to stop him. First things first, Max replied. We have to find your cousin. Suddenly, Max's phone rang. It was Gwen calling from her mobile phone from the top of the Washington Monument. Hang on, Gwen, Max said. We're coming. The pair arrived just in time to see Gwen's mobile phone crash to the ground. If they didn't act quickly, Gwen would be next. In the nick of time, the Omnitrix powered up. Ben turned the dial and hit the device. Within moments, he had transformed into Stinkfly. As Stinkfly took to the sky, Gwen lost her grip and fell from the top of the monument. She plummeted towards the ground at a rapid rate. Just as quickly as she fell, Gwen was in the arms of Stinkfly. Butterfly, she exclaimed. Stinkfly, her cousin responded. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, thanks for the save. But Gwen wasn't safe yet. The mutant bird was close behind. Stinkfly darted, swooped, dipped and soared as he tried to escape the crazed creature. Watch out for nose there, Polly, he taunted. Continuing through the air, Stinkfly saw that Grandpa Max had climbed to the top of the monument. I can shake a cracker breath, he said to Gwen. You're going to have to trust me. And with that, he dropped Gwen into her their grandfather's arms. Go, Max called to Stinkfly. Stop, Animo! Soon, Stinkfly was at Kelly Industries, where he knew he would find the Verities Award and... Dr. Animo. Sure enough, the crazed inventor was grasping the Dr. Kelly's award. I'd like to thank the committee for this honour, he cried. Animo then jumped on the back of the dinosaur and prepared to leave. With a ferocious squeak, the dinosaur lunged at Dr. Kelly. Stinkfly swiftly flew in and stunned the creature with a rapid punch. The fight was on. With one powerful movement, the dinosaur struck Stinkfly with its tail and sent the alien crashing to the ground. Miraculously, Stinkfly landed right next to a golden sumo slammer card. <gasps> I struck sumo slammer gold! But before he could grab his coveted prize, Stinkfly heard the desperate call of Dr. Kelly hanging from the teeth of the dinosaur. He needed help 
fast. Oh, man, Stinkfly moaned. This hero stuff ain't easy. He left the card on the ground and flew to the rescue, catching Dr. Kelly and dropping him to safety. Furious at the interference, Animo proceeded to fire an energy blast at Stinkfly. Dodging the attack, Stinkfly darted towards Animo and knocked the Verity's award from his hands. No! Animo screamed, the award smashing on the floor. Taking advantage of the inventor's distracted state, Stinkfly grabbed the transmodulator from his head and threw it to the ground. As it hit the ground, the device sent out an energy wave. Its scientific powers were gone. As quickly as they had become mutated, all of Animo's animals transformed back into their original states. The dinosaur changed back to bones and crumbled to the floor. The massive bird shrank back to a friendlier size. Soon, the police were escorting Dr. Animo from Kelly Enterprises. Let me go, he cried. I deserve that award. I've got it coming to me. I want it. For some reason, that sounds kind of familiar, Ben mused. As the Tennysons climbed into their camper van, Ben reflected on their adventure. I didn't get that gold sumo slammer card, but At least I snagged a trophy from Animo. Then he placed the broken transmodulator in a box. Plus, I guess saving the city from Dr. Wacko is its own reward. Don't forget you saved me too, Gwen added. Thanks. Well, that's what we heroes do best, Ben replied. Rescue dweebs. The cousins continued to joke about it as the camper van took them away from Kelly Enterprises and towards their next adventure. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. We have a new story every day, so make sure you subscribe. The end.